Not exactly creepy, but I used to sit outside, in the sun, after doing my homework, when I was eight or nine. I'd start building little shrines for the ants, and I'd try to imagine what it'd be like to be an ant and what would they think of a human and how their limited lifespan would make it seem as if I was an immortal being to them. And eventually this would make me wonder about the universe and the stars and how small and insignificant we were. At some point it was like everything clicked and it all made sense for one moment, the universe, life, etc. And then I'd lose that feeling and would go play with my toys. And I'd do this every day. Once in 8th grade, two friends and I went exploring near in the woods and came across an old Civil War graveyard. We started playing in there for around 10 minutes and left to keep exploring. Nothing happened until later that night. I woke up suddenly to someone punching and kicking me, thought it was my uncle and that I pissed him off somehow. Lasted for about 30 seconds and I got out of the covers and my room was still locked and lights still on. I remember being able to see things from the third person. Like one time in like third grade I was on the bus to school and someone took my hat, and I remember seeing it happen but as if I was watching through a camera. I specifically remember seeing the top of my head. Also me. Remember seeing myself as like a baby or a kid doing things. Some of them are the only memories I have when I was really really young but maybe they're all just dreams? was just going to write about this. My mom and brother told me that when I was little I stepped in a wasp nest. They heard me screaming and ran outside to get me. Then they put me in the bathtub. But I remember seeing it from outside of my body. I saw them running out of the house to me but I saw it from a different area, and I remember seeing myself in the bathtub. I do that to this day. My doctor says it's this. Link to wikipedia.org regarding depersonalization. The name reminds me of the things my friends used to see in my hometown, they called them hoppers. They were off-white glowing humanoid creatures that have faces that resemble a canid, they are very tall and slender with long fingers that have claws at the end. The hoppers pop out from trees and watch you. My friends saw them most often when they would hang out near one of their houses that was just out of town. They were very uncomfortable whenever these hoppers would show up and watch them. I once was coming back from school, and then this guy comes out of nowhere, pulls out a table knife, and threatens to stab me if I don't come with him. So I panic, and try to cross the street to get away from him, he grabs onto my backpack so that I don't run away but I still manage to overcome his grip, I manage to away and he comes after me, but... A white van comes out from the corner full speed and runs him over. The ambulance came, but he died anyways, apparently he ended up accidentally stabbing himself in the chest when he tried to shield himself from the van. I met a dead person once. Rung my friend Amy's doorbell and an older woman answered and told me Amy was at dance class but I could sit on the front porch and roll her yarn balls for her. Being eight, I did it and him out with the old lady for a few hours waiting for Amy. Amy didn't get back before I had to go and so I left and came back the next day. I asked who the old lady was and she said she didn't know. A few months later we were at her house cleaning out her guest room and I found a Polaroid of the lady I met. Amy said it was her great aunt but she had been dead for six years. I told her about the porch meeting and Amy shrugged and told me that seemed to happen. Apparently her aunt still visited and they would smell her perfume or find her knitting stuff laying out. Guess she just didn't want to leave her family yet. I can remember when I was in maybe fifth grade, I had gotten a rash while on vacation. They wear these little bumps like pimples that could be popped if I tried hard enough. There was a patch of this rash on the inside of the elbow, and it had scabbed over. I was in a school assembly and I scratched my arm. To my dismay, I scratched off a large scab. But the scab didn't fall off, and stuck to the bottom of the scab, was what looked like a white worm. I tried pulling on it, and I started to pull on it. It started to come out, and I felt what I can only describe as a release of pressure further down my arm by my wrist. Being in an assembly, my little mind didn't grasp the severity of what I was seeing, so I decided to wait until the assembly was over. Whatever was in my arm had other plans, and started to retreat back into my arm, so I kept pulling on it, 
trying to keep it out until I could go to the office. I ended up ripping my scab of the end of the worm thing, and it went back into my arm. Knew had anything like that happened to me since. Might have imagined it, but the sheer discomfort I still feel in my arm while recalling it makes me think otherwise. Didn't tell my anyone about it until years after. Well, in the most simple way possible, I remember things I shouldn't and don't remember things that I should. Now it could just be that my parents are slash were hipsters, I guess. For clarity I was born in 1998. The little that I can remember from my early childhood, 0 to 6-ish, is pretty much blank except for some strange memories that seems to exist in an amalgamation of the mid-90s and mid-00s. Like, if I didn't still have friends from back then I would be convinced that my memories are artificial for the first six years of my life and heavily controlled for the next four. It doesn't help my suspicions that my mother who frequently jokes that I'm a clone tried to convince me that decade was not worth knowing about for the longest time. As for the stuff that I don't remember but really should, things like why my best friend is my best friend, and the years that important life events happened in. Also my memories seem very, empty. Like, no passerbys, and a disproportionate number of them take place at night in empty fast food joints. Which is odd because my parents are very anti-fast food. I'm sure I have a memory of me sitting in a hungry jacks at like 10 o'clock with Space Jam on a TV in the corner, but that makes no sense because that memory would have to take place in like 2006-ish judging by the age I think I was. But why the hell would anyone be playing Space Jam on TV in 2006? The town I spent my youngest years had the quirk that proper basements rare. That's not the weird part. The weird part was actually a set of tunnels, common knowledge to most as just some relic of local history. Legally they were closed and forbidden for safety and it was trespassing to use them. Every kid in town knew the entrances though, most of us who had basements could walk on and if we could pick the locks to basement entrances if we ripped off the panels, which was why the tunnels were supposedly closed and banned, some were even bricked off. We would use them to visit each other or get to the parts of town where no one guarded the entrances to the few parts still open. Every so often we'd do mapping operations, since every group of kids held their own maps, and very few shared the maps outside their friends. It was during one of these into a part rumored to be haunted where we found weird writing on soggy pages, chairs with piles of rusty chains, and old rusty tools we didn't recognize. We were hoping for a shortcut to a kid's house who always had the newest games actually. When we checked the map later and worked out roughly where it'd be it was right under the school. We all agreed to stay away from there and take the long way round. One from my small town in New Hampshire, only really have heard it from my family and surrounding friends, though I think a lot of people have experienced this in some form or another and don't want to say because it sounds stupid. And the reason it sounds stupid is because it's aliens. Not greys, but something pretty different. Quadrupeds about 10 to 20 feet tall, human-like but with elongated portions. Colored grey or white. Kinda looks like SCP-096 if it was much larger, but I wasn't even using that internet at the point I have the memory, so it wasn't something I made up because I read a spooky creepy pasta. I have a very strange childhood memory of seeing two to three of them in our front yard, romping about. Asked my brother about it and he got quiet for a while, then said that it was probably just my imagination, then proceeded to scare me with an alien costume for about three years, pick related, pretty sure that's exacting what it was. Most of my family and friends in town are afraid of aliens. Without asking my friends about it, multiple of them have given similar reports of such beings. It's probably just a big jape, but fun nonetheless. I live in Phoenix near the res. Was driving home one night at 2 a.m. from work on a dark road about 8 miles long and saw a pair of glowing green slash orange eyes staring at me in my car as I approached pitch black so I floored it at 90 miles per hour and as I looked in the rear view it was following me closer till I got back to a city intersection. Ultra Spoop. When I was 8 I looked out my window and I just saw eyes nothing around them nothing holding them up just freaking eyes they looked human except they were just the purest shade of blue and I cannot recreate the sense fear I felt. Well. I've met a real witch a few years ago. When I was 12, I visited my uncle and aunt a lot, really, really a lot. To make it short, my uncle had a lover, and everybody knew about it, event my aunt. Not much a big deal, I thought. 
Now, there was always a rumor about the lover. Her mother was a witch, like, a pseudo-real one. Naturally, everyone laughed about it, well, at least in my family. Well, the funny thing is that both the house of my uncle, and his lover were exactly in the front of each other. Face to face. One day, my aunt kicked out my uncle from the house, for good reasons indeed. The day next to that, this witch insulted us the whole day, like, she was screaming insults to us coming from her house. She told us all kind of things, and everyone heard it. Her voice were piercing in our ears, and at least in my case, I had a horrid headache for a week after that. She screamed to us like for three hours straight. We were confused as hell. When she finally stopped, everything went nuts. My aunt was pregnant, she had like five to six months, it was her third child, but her first one in years. Suddenly, a black fluid started to drop from her womb, like a lot. It wasn't totally liquid, and there was a lot of little things inside of it, no one of us dared to touch it. The smell of that thing was the worst, it was like the stench of death. Now that I have 20 I can make that association, but at the time, I had no idea about that. Then, she started to vomit blood, again, a lot. We took her to the hospital, and we expected the worst, and spontaneous abortion, but nothing happened. The doctors said that everything was okay, like we invented the whole story. The baby came a few months later, completely healthy and normal. To this day we don't know what the hell happened, but the stench didn't go away for weeks. It was really messed up. My brother used to talk about this creepy shit that his friends would talk about on some ROM translation group when he was a teenager. When I was younger and he went to college there was a period of like a month where we would talk about it every day. I guess one of these guys he met was like into translating Dijins too and there was some weird crap about how he wanted to meet or kidnap a girl he didn't know, like he wanted to do this spontaneously that was his fantasy, and act out some of these fetishes on her. Like I don't know much about Guru stuff but I guess it was stuff like cutting off their arms slash arms and pissing on them stuff like that. As a kid I thought my brother was being serious and then as I got older I was like first of all what the hell obviously this is bullcrap and also second of all why the hell was my brother telling me these insane creepy stories, so I was kind of weirded out. So then flash forward to like a month ago and I meet two of his old friends at this social thing and they don't really remember me or want to talk to me. But towards the end of the night they are literally talking about some weirdo freak who used to harass them when they were teenagers and it sounds like exactly the same thing, like some weird anime shit and cutting off people's arms, so I'm actually pretty freaked the hell out right now. I'll repost this from the other unexplained thread. When I was like 8 or something I used to sleep with both my room and hall light on, I left my door open. One night I was awake fairly late into the night, just trying to fall asleep when I heard footsteps coming up the stairs, my room is directly at the top of the stairs. My bed was placed at an angle with my door so that I could see the top of the stairs without actually seeing down them. As the footsteps kept going I saw a shadow on the wall moving slowly up the stairs. I shit you not, right before, and I mean right before, whatever it was would have gotten to the top of the staircase I worked up the courage to say mom. And the shadow paused for a second before quickly retreating back down the stairs. Stayed up for a while after that but eventually passed out just from sheer tiredness. For some reason I never really asked my parents or anything about it, just sort of repressed it because I didn't really want to think of it. I'm pretty convinced it was a home invader, I doubt anything paranormal would get skittish over a child's voice. We live in a small neighborhood so I'm not really surprised that the dude would have taken off at the sound of a voice. To this day I refuse to mention it to my sisters or parents, don't really see a reason to scare them like that. Canada and on here but from the town I'm from we've got legends of a skunk ape-esque creature living in the wetlands around here. Old friend's family says it got their dog. I'm not inclined to believe them. What I do believe in is the Wendigo stories. Local indigenous folks get freaked the hell out sometimes. Some crap goes on around here sometimes. Not in recent years but natives have stories going way back talking about this Wendigo. They say he used to be a brave warrior, but he got lost in a battle one winter and ate someone. He turned into a Wendigo and massacred the village. 
There's plenty of stories they have of the Wendigo coming back every few years and taking people. Only reason I believe is because a native girl went missing but authorities didn't do shit. Not out of the ordinary, officials don't give a crap about the indigenous at times. But what weird is that the rest of the natives locked themselves up in their homes and didn't come out for a few days. We got a massive cold front and snow for those next few days. I've got some native friends so I went to go check on them and make sure they were all good, not freezing to death, and when I got there it was just getting dark. I knocked on doors, no answer. I though it was weird but heard a door getting knocked on down the street. I looked over, and saw this big freaking thing. It looked skinny as all hell. It was dark so I couldn't tell the skin tone but it just looked fucking gross. It was missing some skin and had this big freaking grin in his face. Looked like that damn SCP but all it did was just walk off. Next day the cold front passed and the snow started to melt. I talked to some of the natives about it and they said it was probably the Wendigo. I don't screw around outside when it gets cold out of nowhere anymore now. Friend told me the creepiest story from her life. She was a little girl on her great grandma's family home. Was a huge place and incredibly old. They used to own slaves. Anyway when she was little she decided to sleep in the building in the back with all the beds because it was cool and she could make a big ass blanket fort in there. She had no clue it was an old slave quarters in the 1800s. After making the fort and having her fun she said she felt an enormous inexplicable guilt fall over her for messing up the beds so she took the time to remake all of them. Then she slept in a bed tucked into a far corner with a wall against the headboard and side of it. She then realized that the beds were very small and the blanket was thin and not nearly enough warmth for the cold of the night will continue. She was trying to readjust for comfort when the blanket she was adjust just got ripped off of her violently and disappeared into the darkness. She was terrified and looked around the floor and room and didn't see it anywhere. Then she figured maybe it fell between the wall and bed underneath. So she said she went under the bed and saw it bundled up into a very tight ball all the way in the back against the wall. So she slowly went to go grab it and when it moved she saw the face of a small black boy staring at her. He said I'm cold and pulled the blanket back to the wall and reballed it. She then sat on the bed terrified until her mom came in the next morning asking why she wasn't covered up because it was freezing that night. Her mom said why aren't you covered? It's super cold in here and still in shock my friend looked up and said he's cold pointing under the bed where the blanket was still balled up. Then when she told her mom the story her mom thought she was messing with her until she realized her daughter didn't even know it was a slave house. When I was a kid, my parents moved our family in with our grandparents, because we were struggling and poor. Our room was at the back of the house, just across the hall from our grandparents, and since we were so small, we shared a queen-sized bed. We had this huge, metal wardrobe in the room. It belonged to my grandma, but I think we kept our toys in it. A piece of wood held the doors shut when it wasn't in use, since it was old and didn't have a latch. Anyway, after a while we started to hear very loud, frantic banging coming from inside it. I don't remember when it started, but I remember waking up one night and being terrified, because it was so loud and so close. I remember staying up some nights, just listening to it, and a few times I'd look over and my brother would just be looking at me. We'd stare at each other in silence, both scared, but afraid to say anything or move. Sometimes, it even seemed like the wardrobe would shake from the force of whatever was inside. My mother doesn't remember us telling her about the banging, but when I brought it up, she told me that she remembers both of us were terrified of the wardrobe, and we wouldn't go near it after a while. It was moved into the basement when we moved out of that room. What's really odd, is that even though my brother and I both heard the banging, none of the adults ever did. The door was always left open, since we were so young at the time, and nobody ever came in to see if something was wrong. It was like they couldn't hear it. One night when we were a little older, I remember sitting up with my brother in that room, wide awake even though it was well into the night. We were talking quietly in the dark, while the house creaked around us. I remember him looking up at the ceiling and saying, you know when the house creaks and cracks at night? And they say it's just the house settling? They're lying. It's something else. The house is already settled. There's something else here making noises.
It was a Friday afternoon. While other girls were making plans with their friends, 15-year-old Alyssa Bustamante had something else in mind. As soon as she got home from school, she spent the rest of the day digging two holes in a nearby wooded area. Alyssa carried on with her life all the while waiting for the perfect opportunity to attack her target. That opportunity arrived just four days later on the evening of October 21, 2009, when her neighbor, Elizabeth Olton, was walking home from Alyssa's house after a playdate with her younger sister. Alyssa abducted the girl and lugged her to the Missouri woods where her grave was already prepared for her. She beat her, strangled her, and finally, stabbed her and slit her throat before dumping her mangled body into one of the graves. Alyssa, charged up by the thrill and excitement of the kill, headed back home and into her bedroom to document the experience into her diary. She wrote, I just freaking killed someone. I strangled them and slit their throat and stabbed them now they're dead. I don't know how to feel ATM. It was amazing. As soon as you get over the oh my god I can't do this feeling, it's pretty enjoyable. I'm kinda nervous and shaky though right now. K, I gotta go to church now, lol. Upon her arrest, Alyssa was asked why she killed Elizabeth. She responded that she wanted to know what it was like to kill someone. Alyssa was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. Go real or go home.